Hey guys, it's me Drew, and on this episode of Everything Paracord, I'm going to be showing you how to make the popular piranha or shark jaw bone paracord stitch. Here it is, it's pretty cool, pretty rugged looking. I made this one in orange and black, and today we're going to be using orange and brown. So, the materials that you're going to need for this paracord bracelet, or really any paracord project, are a lighter. I prefer a Bic lighter, it gives off a strong flame and has a good amount of good gasoline in there. Then you're going to need some sort of knife. I would recommend a smaller knife. This one's this little Tac Force spring assisted opening knife. It serves its purpose pretty well. It's got some sharp serrations. And it's also got a little glass cutter, which you can actually use to cut paracord, but I would recommend the serrations more. Now you can use a bigger knife, like the Gerber Bear Grylls Ultimate Survival Knife. But the thing is, it's just kind of, you know, big and bulgy, so it's going to be harder to cut, especially if you only have a small amount of space, like this square desk. And then last but not least, you're going to need the cord. So the two cord items we have here are the long strand of cord itself, which is this. A bunch of it here, probably got about 10 feet, 5 orange, 5 brown. And then you're going to need your spine, which is basically um, some paracord that's tied with a knot at the end. This is a two-strand diamond knot. If you want to learn how to make this, we have a video. And then it's like a loop and knot closure system, which means that you just fit the loop over the knot and that keeps it closed. The other option is buckles, and Ben actually uses buckles, so when he puts some Everything Paracord videos up, you can see that and you can see his jig. So yeah, let's get started. And by the way, this right here is um, our pet chameleon's cage. If you know his name and what type of chameleon it is, then comment. We have a video on him if you want to see him. So yeah, what you're going to do is you're going to take your spine, and you're going to lay it over the long strand, and then you're going to start your weave. So you're going to take the end that's actually up. You're going to take the end that's on the left. Usually I'd start with the right, but today we're going to be using the left in the beginning. And you're going to go, first you're going to go over this part of the spine, and you're going to go under this part, and you're going to go under the orange. And just like that. And now you're going to pull that through until you have just a little loop at the end, which is right here. And also, if you see, there we go. If you see me putting my hand over it like this, then because when you pull it through, it can like move around, especially if you don't have a jig. So just putting your hand over it as you pull it through really helps to keep it stable and not ruin everything. But anyway, you're going to take your orange end now, which is on this, which is the right side, and you're going to go over this part, under this part, under this part, and then you're going to go over the loop. So we're just going to do that now. Once again, I'm going to put my hand down, keep it all steady. And you're going to pull that through. Then you're going to grab your brown again. And now you're just going to basically move it around if it gets tangled. And now you're just going to carefully tighten it. Once again, use your hands. So you can, you know, keep it from moving all over the place. And then there's your first stitch, which is this little... There it is. So now you're going to move that up, because it's going to not be at perfectly at the top when you start. And you're going to move it up until you have a small loop. So now we're going to do that one more time, or maybe two more times. And then once we're done with that, I'm going to cut the video, then I'm going to you know, build up most of it until we have one or two left, and then I'll show you finishing it off, and then, you know, how to do all that. So yeah, once again, we're going to take the brown, which is on the right now, we started with it on the left, and we're going to go over, under, under. So over, under, and under. And then we're going to pull that through once again, until we have a small loop. And then... Take your orange, which is now on the left, and you're gonna go, you're gonna go over, under, over. Well, over. Sorry, you're gonna go. Sorry, just you, you get what I mean. So you're gonna go over, under, under, and then through the loop. You're gonna pull that. I just 
taking a takes a long time to pull it at the beginning because you have a lot of cord hanging around. And by the way, you want to start off with excess cord because if you ever start out with not enough cord, then when you get to the point where you know you run out of cord, you either got to start over, which is wicked annoying, you got to untie everything, and then you got to waste that cord and cut more cord, or you got to burn the ends with more cord, which ends up having these big black blotches on it, which you know doesn't look good at all. So then you're gonna, you know, keep pulling that tight until you have this. Sorry if you can't really see that. So now we'll do one more. And we'll basically take this brown. A little over, under, under. Just like that. Pull it all the way through until you have this little loop here. And then grab that orange again, which <coughs> is still pretty long. So we're going to go over, under, under, over. Or over, under, under, through, I should say. Pull that. And then we're just going to work that until we can tighten it all the way. And one small problem, I accidentally put it through again, yeah, so I'm going to pull it out. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to tighten that up. And once you tighten that, you can start to barely see the beginning of the weave. In the beginning, it's going to not look right. But once you get, I don't know, do about here, you're going to see that start to actually take shape. So yeah, uh, I got about, I put in three stitches. So now I'm going to cut the video, and when I'm almost done, I'll come back. Okay guys, well, I've gotten almost half of it done. So I decided to turn the camera back on, so here's what we have so far. Now that I've actually, you know, weaved it a lot, you can really tell what the weave is. Actually, in the beginning, it just doesn't look what's, like what it's supposed to be. Don't worry, it will turn out to look like this. As you can see, I have my other finished one here. So yeah, let's keep going. So I'm going to do a couple more stitches with the camera on, and then I'll turn it off and do the rest of the weaving part. And then I'll show you how we cut it, and then burn it. Before you tighten it up, <clears throat> after every stitch, this is what you should see. This is the design, like, you know, this is what it should look like. And then you just pull that up. You tend to get the design better, <clears throat> sorry, if you pull the, the brown first, which in this case is on the right side. So the color that you're, you see the most of, pull second. And that will get the effect better. But there, you can fix it if it doesn't look right. Because sometimes when you weave it, what will happen is it'll not be tight enough and it won't look right. But you don't have to start all over, you just have to tighten it up. Push the cord together. I'm just pull the chair over.
And then do one more. So once again, you're going to go, it's the right, you're going to go over, under, under. Just like this. See, this is going over this, and do this and under this. And put your hand over it while you're pulling it through, until you have just a little more. And you're going to take your orange, and then you're going to go over, under, under, over, or what I like to also say is over, under, and through, because this is like a loop here. So we're going to go like this. So it'll look like this. And then you're going to tighten the bolts up. Something I failed to mention is that this won't just be like this. You can also do it like this. So if you're making them for other people and they say, "Hey, I want I want it with this color here and then this color here," they get it both ways. So it's pretty cool. That goes for all power cord bracelets. Like, here's a lightning rod. We'll have a video of this up soon. And if you, but this is this this is special because you have the lightning rod here. Looks like this. You can actually see it kind of looks like lightning in the yellow. When you turn out, turn around, it turns into this, what you call it, boxed in, which is totally different, so it's pretty cool. But with all other, we use a paracord that goes the same. See, so like, this, and then this. So yeah, so I'm going to pretty much finish this up, and then I'll show you how we cut it, cut the string, and then uh, use the lighter to get it, so, yeah. And well, I've finished all the weaving, gotten to about here. So now what we're going to do is we're basically going to cut the ends off. I've already cut off the orange end, which is right here. So you can see there's about I don't know, half a centimeter to a centimeter left. You don't want to cut it too, too short because it could go back through, and then it's hard to pull it back in again. So now we're just going to cut off this orange part right here. I'm using my ultimate survival knife because it's, I brought my other one upstairs. The serrations have gotten pretty dull on this, so it's going to take a little longer to cut. I'm in a hurry, so as long as get the job done. So I'm just gonna carefully cut in there. This is taking me a while because of the fact that these stretchings are so dull. But yeah, so yeah, I got these two puffy ends. Those are the orange and the brown ends. So I'm going to go grab my lighter because I misplaced it. So I'll turn the camera back on when I find it. And we'll burn these and then we'll be finished. Okay, so I've got my lighter here. My good old red Bic lighter. And I've got my bracelet. I've already cut and burned the end because there's a little sticking out of this knot. I didn't figure I had that I should video that because, you know, it's just it's pretty straightforward. But now we're just going to get the ends here. So the orange is poking out right here, it's pretty easy to see, and the brown is down in there, it's almost coming out, so I gotta be careful. So what we're gonna do is, it's gonna basically take your lighter, and you're gonna put it over the um, cord. You don't want it to catch on fire, because it's not dangerous, but it might compromise the bracelet, it might char it up. So every time it sets on fire, just turn off the lighter, and then quickly blow out the fire and start again. Uh, I also like to point out that obviously this is fire, so be careful. You're just gonna. What I like to do is sort of dab at it. Now what I and other paracord bracelet and lanyard and whatever makers have noticed is that. What happens is when, when you're burning power cord, it lets out this black smoke it's from the nylon. And if you put it in the blue of the lighter, see how at the bottom it's blue? If you put it in that, you don't get nearly as much black, nasty smoke as if you put it in the yellow. So I would definitely recommend, you know, doing that. 
Just going to dab at both of them a little more. And there you have it. So, as you can see, you can barely even tell that it's been cut and burned and stuff. So now all that's left to do is wait until it cools, and then I'll put it on and bid you guys farewell. And well, it's cooled down, so now I'm going to put it on. Now with the um, battery cord bracelets are a little hard to put on at first, but I, you know, I have like a million of them, so I've been putting them on a lot, so I know what to do. The best way to do it is like put your put your hand wrist down on the desk and pull the knot through. Yeah, so the final product it looks really nice. I'm happy with the way it turned out. I'll show you the obverse side which is here. that so there you have it turned out to be a pretty nice bracelet I'm happy with the overall quality it's definitely a worthwhile thing to do because the weave looks really good here's another e one I made a while ago for a comparison so yeah it's pretty cool I definitely definitely recommend doing this hobby um, a little update too this winter, we're going to be making a lot more Everything Paracord videos because, you know, it's going to be winter, and here in New England, snow gets crazy in winter. So, you know, we won't be able to make a lot of outdoor videos, except we'll try our best, especially because it's fun to make survival and limited videos in the snow. But, yeah, we won't have as many videos outside, so we'll have a lot more time on our hands to be making Everything Paracord. So definitely expect some more episodes of that. And also, if you'd like to know where I get my Paracord from, I get it from a website called paracordstore.com. They sell bracelets than just the cord itself. Or you can also get um, these cool little things called skull beads, which basically they're little beads that you can put on the power cord. Here's one right here. I put that on my knife. So, yeah. I I'll maybe put a link in the description to that website. But yeah, remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.